have you. So I'm going to throw this immediately out to the audience and say, how many of you are driving an electric vehicle at the moment? One, two, three, four. So I would say that probably constitutes less than 5% of the persons uh, sitting here in this room. So if we do not export our crops currently stored uh, in the territory of Ukraine, we will soon harvest another crop. We will bring it and put it next to the current storages, which are filled full. And while there will be a food crisis unfolding in some parts of the world, Ukrainian grain will be getting rotten under open skies. Now, if this problem is not resolved, Ukrainian farmers will not plant another crop. And, we will in, and the whole agricultural cycle in Ukraine will be interrupted. And that will mean a multi-year food crisis. The war has implications uh, for a rules-based order, um, which has international law at its very heart. Um, I think it's very important for us to remember that where international law is undermined in one part of the world, especially in so egregious a fashion, it is undermined everywhere. And we mustn't forget, of course, that Asia already has seen its own erosion of a rules-based order via various um, unlawful and coercive actions on China's part. And my prediction is that the demand for green fuel is going to be dramatically higher than the supply over the next 10 to 15 years as companies right. go down this path. And that sounds in my business years like a great business opportunity. If demand is higher than supply, normally there's a great opportunity for anyone. There's so much that needs to be done and many countries are essentially bankrupt. Uh, they have no funds. We need the state and states to really rethink their role. They shouldn't be there as just fixing different types of market failures, because then they will always be kind of too little too late. What we're really seeing in this conflict is that information does play a key role, that there can't, information can be weaponized. And that's why we wanted to focus so much on, on making sure that we both have the right policies and the enforcement associated with that. The reason we are still serving in Russia, and we believe that that is important, is that we're able to, to deliver independent news into Russia. Um, we've, we know the importance um, not just of being able to feed the world and move the products that we have, but also the effect it has on the economy. What we see with Ukraine now is they, they have the product, it, it can't be moved, that's going to ripple down and have a negative effect on their economy as well. This is a case where I think um, every country should be involved because this is going to be a worldwide problem if we see famine. And let's be clear, this is Putin's famine if it happens. Uh, we have to be clear about that, but we also need to see uh, countries from around the world, not just NATO, not just Europe. Uh, we need to include China, for example. Every country needs to step forward and make an effort here to try and, and address what would be a worldwide problem of famine, but also uh, the possibility of destabilization, not just in those countries, but also worldwide. We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process. Uh, the pace that we need will, uh, will open up for missteps. Mm. Uh, it will open up for uh, shortages on energy. It will create inflationary pressures. And maybe we need to start talking about that, that that pain is actually worth it. Because if we don't, uh, there's no business yeah. case, okay. there's no economy, there's, there's no welfare. But, but so far, I think we are, have been a little bit careful actually talking about the pain in the short term that is likely to come from, from, the, from this the very important yeah. change. Yeah. We could stop subsidizing the past. Today, 70% of the incentives that they are putting uh, in the, for the industry of energy, they go to fossil-based alternatives. Only 20% they go to renewable energy. We're subsidizing the problem. Let's use that precious cash to move fast forward to make that transition a little bit better. Let's bring... Uh, uh, you mentioned regulation. We need, we need to work more, better, stronger, more collaboratively, and I embrace our responsibility also to show how good could like on bringing the regulation that accelerates the change, that brings the solutions that they are ready, more agile, and that they can be plug and play into the systems that we already have. 
uh, in the case of, of Russia. Um, I'm for uh, whatever we can to just tighten the vice. However, I, I do think we, we've got to go back to those cardinal rules. We've got to have multilateral support. Um, and we can't be, you know, we are accused in the United States of weaponizing the dollar through these sanctions. Uh, and I'm mindful of that. And I think we need to have a lot of discretion uh, when we are using the tools that come with the reserve currency of the world. Uh, because every time we use it, even our allies and our friends start to wonder, why is it that you can do this and how are we going to make sure we don't uh, become subject to those sanctions? Well, the idea that was before the war predominant, that we would use natural gas as a transitional energy carrier moving away from coal to renewables, now that you don't want to import that from Russia, you have to change your plans, which means that in some cases, some countries might stick a bit longer to coal. But if you then can speed up uh, the introduction of renewables exponentially, then in terms of emissions, you might st still come out better. But of course, I'd love to to exit out of coal faster and not do this. But the modeling we need to do is based on that. Okay, you use coal a bit longer, but if we go faster on renewables, then in terms of our emissions, we could still be on the positive, on the positive side. We are finding ourselves in a place um, where we're, we have increasing polarization <laughs> everywhere. And everything feels binary when it doesn't need to be. So I think we're going to have to think about a recalibration of a whole range of human rights that are playing out online, you know, from freedom of speech to the freedom to, you know, to be free from on online violence or the uh, right of data protection to the right to child dignity. First of all, I would say that we have to stick to global markets. If we are now, and this is a tendency I feel everywhere in the world, also in my country as well, also in Europe, if we are now saying, okay, first of all, Germany and other countries are caring for themselves, then we will increase the crisis. If we are only caring for our own food supply, our energy supply, it must have a disastrous effect on the prices on the market. So first of all, we have to keep the markets open. Second, we have to see that we have to solve one problem, not on the back of another one. So if we are now increasing the production of fossil fuels and coal power plants all over the place, there's a drought in India, we, you mentioned it, we will definitely have uh, more problems in the next years to come. So we have to see that climate neutrality, the big issue of the conference 2020, um, so two years ago, it seems like ages, but two years ago, it's not gone. So we have to solve one problem with the solutions of the other problem. And third of all, when I mentioned open markets, I like to stress <coughs> out that the the rules of the markets, they have to change. So the globalization, I, I would, I think deglobalization is a wrong phrase. We shouldn't admit to that. We have to stick that we have, that we collaborate in one world and have some solidarity in the world, but therefore we have to change the rule of the markets as well. So these three things I would say are, give an idea where we have to to heed to, and maybe this conference can um, also lead some ways into a more sustainable future. This war is really a turning point of history, and it will reshape our political and our economic landscape in the coming years. But we also are at the tail end of the most serious health catastrophe of the last hundred years, COVID-19, and we have to reinforce our resilience against a new virus, possibly, or other risks which we have on the global agenda. We also have to address urgently the issue of climate change and all the other issues related to the preservation of nature. Never come again. Let's do it. Right now.